Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Yes, ma'am? Oh, oh, Mr. Quigley, I didn't see you hiding behind that counter. Why, just dusting off the percolators before closing, Mrs. Norton. You know, it used to be when a plain, ordinary coffee pot would uh, set Mr. up Quigley, there... Mr. Quigley, I have to meet my husband at the station in a few minutes, so I came to buy a leash. A leash? Yeah. Uh, got a sale on shower curtains today. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Quigley, I'm not interested in shower curtains. Got a nice sale on birdseed, too. Please, do, do you have one of those chain leashes? Hmm. Seems to me like I sold you one of them chain leashes a couple of months back. That's right, you did. My goodness, what a memory you've got. Uh, yep, everybody says always to me, Jeremiah Quigley, what a memory you have. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know as that's so good either. Maybe if I didn't remember so well, I could sell the same person the same thing twice. Maybe. Also, I remember everything about everybody, but I don't repeat a thing. Secrets die with me, only I ain't dead. Mm. Say, uh, what's the matter with Alicia sold you a couple of months back? Oh, there's nothing the matter with it. What do you want in another for? Well... You're being extravagant, it seems to me. You see, Mr. Quigley, we've just gotten another Great Dane. Oh, another one of them big dogs. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a free country, but some people sure use the freedom in strange ways. Well, we like them. How much one of them dogs cost, eh? About a hundred dollars. Oh, nearer to a thousand for a really good one. That's why I just couldn't resist. a thousand. You must be rich, buying a thousand dollar dog for a thousand dollars. Oh, we didn't buy him. Much you didn't buy him. Folks don't give away thousand dollar dogs without charging. Well, we are... I know human nature... Hard enough to sell a yard to Calico. We were given this dog, believe me, Mr. Quigley, by a radio program. <laughs> I was interviewed and given the dog just yesterday. Mm. I see you don't believe me, do you? Well... well can't help it. It was announced on a program that a dog was being given away, and I went down to New York, and I asked for him, and I got him. That's all there is to it. Mm. We never could have afforded a second day, and otherwise... And Considering the upkeep, we can hardly afford in this way. You've got to be rich to afford the upkeep. No denying. They're a mighty big dog, oh, they are. What's the use of arguing? Well, anyway, because they're so big, I am trying to buy a chain leash. A chain leash? Hmm. Instead of just a leather one, they bust them just like so. Well, you don't have to explain to me. Of course, I don't hold with tying up dogs. Oh, no, I don't want you to think that we're the kind of people who tie up dogs. Nope. We let Bluff run around loose whenever he likes. Yep. But you see, not everybody realizes that his bark is worse than his bite. Uh, yep. So there are times when we have to tie him up. Oh, yep. You know, actually, I, I don't think Bluff minds too much. Because the minute he's tied up, he feels ferocious. Uh, yep. <laughs> so it sort of feeds his vanity to tie him up once in a while. Uh, yep. Mr. Quigley, why are you looking at me like that? Well, you don't act rich. You don't talk rich. You don't even look especially rich. But you must be mighty rich. Yep. Them Great Danes are awfully big dogs. And big dogs sure do a lot of eating. Eating costs plenty of money these days, you know. So I figures you must be mighty rich. Well, then I think you ought to know that I expect these dogs to eat us right out of house and home. Yep. And my husband's the kind of people who'd rather feed a dog than feed himself. Yep. So even though these dogs are a lot more than we bargained for, and actually we we have no right to keep them, well, there they are, so we'll never be rich. (laughs) Mm. And now I guess I'd better buy that leash and get out of here. I still have to make my husband's train. Uh, Yep. So could you show me one of those chain leashes? Right over here. And, Mr. Quigley, if you should happen to see my husband... Please do me a favor and don't tell him about this new dog. Well, he can't very well have a Great Dane around the house and not know he's there, can he? Oh, he's not around the house yet. No? I don't even know when he's coming, but the point is he's supposed to be a surprise for my husband. Some surprise. (laughs) You sure you know what you're doing, Mrs. Norton? Of course I'm sure, Mr. Quigley, so please don't tell David, hmm? I mean, if you should happen to run into him. Oh, I don't repeat nothing ever, Mrs. Norton. Good. Still, I don't believe in surprises myself. Whenever Mrs. Quigley surprises me, it's always a disappointment. Here are the leashes. My goodness. 
Didn't he have a variety? Uh, yep. Quigley Store's got a variety of everything. These are the chain leashes. Oh, yes, I see them. Two ninety three. Buy it or don't buy it. Two ninety three it is. That's a lot of money. And if you're so rich that you can afford two dogs, you can afford a leash for two ninety three. Well, I didn't say anything, but it's still... Won't do you no good to run over to Bridgeport to look. Everything they got in Bridgeport, I got right here, and it won't be any cheaper in Bridgeport. Besides, it'll cost you the gas to get over there. You buy the leash. All right. Wrap it up, Mr. Quigley. Something else you want to buy? Mm, no, not another thing. I, I sure I heard that train whistle just a minute ago, so just wrap it up and I'll... Got go. a nice sale on roasting pans, you know, Thanksgiving leftovers. Oh, please wrap up the leash. I'm getting terribly late and I hate to keep Mr. Norton waiting. Especially when I have to explain where I was and I don't want to tell Nothing him why. Nothing to be ashamed about shopping in Quigley's general store. Still, if you have made up your mind, that's all you want. I'll wrap it up for Thanks. you. Stay where you are. I'll wrap it up. Phew. So here's where you da- are. David! Fine way to meet your husband at his train. David, you're psychic. How'd you find me here? Oh, nothing psychic about it. I looked up and down the street, and when you weren't at the station, I saw the car parked in front of the store. Well, so I... you're brilliant. This is a fine place for you to be. What's the matter with it? Nothing, except don't I look woe-be-gone and forlorn? Oh, darling, I tried to get to the station, but you know that Mr. Quigley, when he starts talking... Now, stop <laughs> apologizing. You're forgiven. Thank you. Don't tell me I'm sweet. You are. What are you doing here, anyway? Well, I, uh, I, I just came to buy something. You don't say. Yes. Um, uh, Mr. Quigley's wrapping it up now. Good. Then we'll wait. Well, uh, David, don't you want to go out to the car and wait for me there? No. Why should I? Well, I just didn't think men liked standing around in stores. That's all. Oh, I don't mind. Yes, you wouldn't. This uh, this isn't like a department store in New York. Funny old place, isn't it? Yes, hilarious. <laughs> David, listen, don't you have to buy some tobacco? No, I just got a couple of cans yesterday. Oh, that's life. Thanks, anyway. It's all right. Oh, look, he's got the cracker barrel and everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sort of taking his time about wrapping it up. I feel a sneeze coming off. Oh, dear. Hold Bless it right there. No, it's gone away. For heaven's sake. Say, what'd you buy? Must you know everything? I certainly must. Well, since you must, I bought you a secret. Oh, sure. Yeah, when I tell you, you don't believe me. I bought a secret. Oh, where's that, Mr. Quigley? Mm, I'm not in any hurry now that I found you. I say, did you listen to the radio program this morning? No, why? I thought you'd have listened to the Pringles breakfast program. And that they might have mentioned who they gave the great Dane away to. Oh, uh, no, I didn't listen. Say, David, did you? I meant to, and catching the early train, I didn't have a chance. Oh, well, what's the difference? <laughs> no difference at all. Darling, would you have liked to get him? Well, we have one great Dane, that's enough. It is? Mm-hmm. You had to be a millionaire to have two. You and Mr. Quigley. Me and who? Nothing. Oh, here he right, comes. Here's your package. Here's your package, Why, Mrs. Why, thank Norton. you, Mr. Quigley. You know my husband, don't you, Mr. Quigley? Uh, yep. Uh, good evening, sir. Feeling fine, thank you. Good. Here, I'll take the package. Oh, that's all right, darling. I have it. I here have it. you are, Mrs. Norton. It's yours, and here's the change. Seven cents exactly. Thank you very much. Well, if you insist on carrying your secret, and if your purchases are completed and your finances is in order... To the chariot, Mrs. Norton. Yes, let's get out of here. Yep, must be mighty nice to be rich. Mighty nice. What's that you were saying, Mr. Quigley? Nothing. I wasn't saying nothing, except it must be mighty nice to be rich. Yes, yes, oh, it, David, it must be. Please, let's go. Of course, go. everybody's got their own standards, but according to mine, you're rich folk. Are uh, you uh, talking about us, Mr. Quigley? Who else is around? Then if you're talking about us, Mr. Quigley, we're not rich, not by a long shot. No. You singing the same song, ain't you? Oh, dear. Oh, what have you been saying, darling? Me? I? Have no in my mouth. Uh, look, Mr. Quigley, if my wife's been putting on false oh, airs... Oh, nothing but... false about her airs. Why, thank you, Mr. Quigley. But any folks that can own two... Well, we... Uh, well, I won't say it. I ain't no gossip. Mr. Quigley, you promised me... I ain't me said nothing. Much. Come on, David, let's go home. No need to get huffy now, Mrs. Norton. All I was saying is it uh, takes a lot of money to feed the great day. Oh, you're telling us. Bluff gets his meals in our house, and we get the scraps. Uh, <laughs> who's Bluff? T'other one? Up. Uh, what other one? 
I will never speak to you again, Mrs. Mr. Norton, Quigley. I won't have you accusing me. I ain't told Mr. Norton he's got two dogs. Shh. Nope, I haven't. Oh. I've got um, two. Bluff. What's the other Mr. one? Mr. Quigley, you are a traitor. Why? Claudia, what is in that package? It's just a leash, darling, just a leash. Bluff broke his leash, and so I bought another. Mr. Quigley's got a crazy idea that, that well, we have uh, to... Bluff's leech happens to be in the car. Oh. oh. <laughs> is that where it is? Yes. Lying ain't holy. Of course, you run your life, and one way I run mine t'other. I don't meddle. Oh, what's the use? So you are the young woman who was in the other room, huh? Young woman in the other uh, room. Shut up now while I tell you a few things. You were at the Pringles yesterday morning. You were there at 10 o'clock. And you were in the little back room. David, how'd you know? The Pringles have gray drapes and blue walls in their living room. David, you are psychic. And you were there when I was there, only I didn't know it was you. I was there while you were... Yes. Then you, you, you were the man who rang the doorbell while I was there? I am. I will never forgive you. My mouth was in my heart the whole time you were there. I thought for sure they'd give you the dog. Oh, only, of course, I didn't know that it was you. Why, you little double-crosser. Going to down to New York and getting that dog behind my back. Behind your back? Yes. What about you behind mine? Well, that makes no difference. You know, you're almost a thief. Now, wh- you would have taken him away from me if I hadn't gotten there first. You're darn tootin' I would have. It's a fine thing to do to your own wife. Well, you did it to me. You're what are you not talking? to be uh, trusted, David Norton. Well, I can't uh, leave you Hold on there. Minutes. Hold on there. I don't allow no bickering in the store. Just like rich folks, always quarreling. Quarreling? Who's quarreling? Silly little man. Oh, we're not quarreling. Sounded to me like quarreling. Just like I said, surprises ain't never no good. Uh, Mr. Quigley, for once you're wrong. Shopping is getting to be less and less of a chore. Now that selections are greater... Now that so many places have Coca-Cola coolers installed right where you do your buying, it's easy and pleasant to stop in the midst of your errands, drop a nickel in the slot, and get a bottle of ice-cold Coke. It helps you shop refreshed. Mr. King, uh, what do you think, huh? Uh, What do I think about what? Why, some folks just don't make no sense. None whatsoever. Uh, If you're talking about Claudia and David, Mr. Quigley, I think they make a lot of sense. Two dogs. Now, that don't make no sense. Particularly, you ain't rich. It don't. Oh, but they are. Said they wasn't. Not the way you meant. But anyone with two Danes, space for both, and a marriage that's solid, that person's a millionaire. Well, it's uh, all in the way you look at it. But two Danes is an awful lot of dogs. Yes, two Danes are an awful lot of dogs. Uh, We'll find out tomorrow. Well, uh... I uh, have to close up the store now. Be seeing you. Right. See you. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment... Think of Coca-Cola, for Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.